Hi everyone, my name is Victor and today I will explain you the difference between cash flows and profits. A lot of people think that profit means making money, so a company that makes a lot of money must be profitable, right? Well, not really. Let me show you why. When keeping track of financial information of a company, accountants use mainly three different sheets to record information and calculate performance. These three are the balance sheet, the income statement and the cash flow statement. In this video, we are going to be focusing on the income and cash flow statements. The cash flow statement is used to keep track of the amount of cash in the company's bank account. It is more like a bookkeeper's diary. For example, if you bought something today for £10 and you paid for it, this is registered as a £10 cash outflow from the account. And the opposite would happen if, for example, your friend gave you those £20 that he owed you, so this would be registered as a £20 inflow to your account. If both these transactions happen on the same date, the net cash flow for this date would be of a £10 inflow, or the sum of all the transactions. Since you pay £10 out, the cash flow is actually minus 10, and when you add it up to the 20 received, the difference is positive 10, or a £10 inflow. So the cash flow statement simply keeps track of when you paid money out and when you received money in, and the net flow is simply the result of all these transactions. But wait, isn't this the same as keeping track of a company's profit? I mean, if you pay £10 out and you receive £20, you must have had a profit of £10, right? Wrong! The income statement is the financial sheet that keeps track of the actual profits of a company. It is very similar to the cash flow statement, but instead of registering the ins and outs as they happen, in the income statement, the transactions are registered matching the time period when they occurred. This is known as the accruals principle. So what does that mean? Let me give you an example. Say you have a mobile phone with a contract that started on the first day of January. The bill of £10 is due and paid on the 10th of February. How would you record this transaction? On the cash flow statement, since the bill was paid in February, it would be recorded in February as a cash outflow. But on the income statement, this would be treated as a January expense, as the service was used during the month of January. Got it? So basically, it doesn't matter when exactly the money came in or out of the account in the income statement. What matters is the time period that the amount matches. Okay, you must be thinking, got it. Which one should I choose then? The important thing to notice is that both cheats are crucial to a company's financial health. I'll tell you a little story so that this becomes clearer. Joan opened his first business, a little bakery in a small town. This is what the first month of business went like. The bakery generated £9,000 of revenues and spent £6,300 with materials and ingredients to produce the breads and cakes John made. This is known as the cost of goods sold. The bills added up to another £1,000 of expenses and the rent was paid for 3 months in advance. Now, let's have a look at the accounting sheets. The cash flow statement reveals a disaster. If you add up all the transactions for the first month, Joan has just lost £1,300. But before going desperate, let's have a look at the income statement. The income statement reveals a profit of £700. Why is this so different than the figure in the cash flow statement? Well, in this case, it's easy to see what happened. In the cash flow statement, the rent was considered as a full amount of £3,000. After all, John really paid for this amount in the first month. However, the £3,000 of rent are not going to be used during the first month only, and that's why we considered a different value on the income statement. The rent expense for month 1 equals the total rent paid divided by the total usable periods, so 3,000 divided by 3 equals 1,000. That is the amount of rent that was actually used in the first month. In the second month, John had a new idea. In order to attract more customers, he started taking credit cards as a method of payment. This is a great feature, but the problem is that sales made in credit take the period of one month before they are transferred to John's account. The figures for month 2 are 10,500 pounds in revenues, of which 7,500 in cash and 3,000 on credit, and 7,350 pounds as the cost of the goods sold. The bills and rent are still the same as last month. It is important to notice that even though John didn't actually pay any rent on month 2, this is still an expense that was used during the period and it should be reflected on the income statement. Now let's have a look at the statements. The cash flow statement reveals a loss again, and the income statement shows an even greater profit. So what happened this month? We didn't have any rent to pay anymore, so shouldn't we have received a lot of money? Well, sort of. Remember the credit sales? John only got £7,500 of the revenues on cash. The remaining £3,000 are only going to be received next month. This explains the negative cash flow for month 2. In the third month, the business went down a little bit, but we have something different going on. Total revenue was £8,000 and the cost of goods sold was £6,500. 
The bills and rent are still the same as the previous month, but we have a new entry. Remember the credit sales last month? John received the cash from these sales now, a total of £3,000. Now let's have a look at the statements again. The cash flow statement finally shows a positive number. But before we celebrate, let's check the income statement to understand what happened. This time the income statement registered a loss. What is going on? How can we make money and still have negative profit? In this case, the reason for this apparent paradox is that John received a lot of delayed cash from the second month on the third month. That's why the net cash flow was positive, even though the business lost money in its operation. I bet that at this point, you're starting to realize the importance of keeping track of the financial information in many different angles. So let's reinforce the idea. In John's bakery, he made more profit than losses, but he lost more cash than he made. Is this a successful business? John's gonna have to pay for the rent again in month 4, another £3,000. How can he make sure he will have enough money to pay the bill? John is also thinking of buying a new industrial oven. Is it a good idea to do so now? To answer all these questions, it's necessary to analyze the financial information in many different ways if you want to make a good decision. John's Baker example is a very simple one. When you add depreciation, interest, loans and many other financial features to the account, there is no way of keeping track of all the information without an advanced set of sheets to help you out. I hope I gave you enough information to start thinking about these issues on your own. Just please remember this one thing. In the end, a company that makes money has nothing to do with a company that makes profit. 